At Chargers camp, the vibe is all good. Now on the heels of Justin Herbert becoming the league's highest paid quarterback at better than $262 million over five years, more than 218 of that is guaranteed. So after locking up their uber-talented signal caller, now the expectations for a team that gave back a huge lead in their playoff loss a season ago to the Jaguars. There's certainly pressure on Coach Brandon Staley, who went one-on-one -on -one with our Jonathan Jones. Jonathan Jones, CBS Sports, alongside Chargers head coach Brandon Staley. And I think we have to start with the newly minted $262.5 million man, uh, Justin Herbert. Like, we've talked with some folks here. We know that the money's not going to change him, but just how happy are you that this got done? It's a special moment for him, for us, and it's a really good way to kick off the season. And I think, you know, yesterday when, when we, you know, the team kind of found out to see our team and how happy they are for him. And, you know, I think out here on this practice field today and seeing the response from the crowd, um, you know, we're for so fortunate that he's our quarterback, that he's the leader of the team. And, you know, just through his first three years I mean the type of person that he is the type of competitor uh, and then the type of player um, he's all we could ask for any stress any anxiety throughout the process on your end not at all you know he, he he's so good at the focus part of this game and he's so committed to his craft and you know it's always been about the team for Justin and I think that's why everybody respects him so much is he's doing his best for the team and so today is you know it felt like all the other days but there was maybe an extra bounce because of you know um, how happy everyone was for him and you know I think what this contract does for him is it shows him the respect that he's earned and and I think what that does is it frees you up you know to go be the, the player and the person that you are. Offensive coordinator Kellen Moore, obviously uh, curious what sort of impression, what impact he has made so far, specifically on Justin and how we know that he loves to stress defenses, what he's going to be able to do. Yeah, Kellen's got a phenomenal background, not just in offense, but just I think you know, he's been around so much good football. His dad's a high school coach, played for Chris Peterson at Boise, and he's been a part of a lot of winning football in the NFL as a player and as a coach. And so um, he's brought a lot to our football team. And offensively, you know, I think what he's done for Justin is just try to get him to play fast. And, and, and it sounds so simple, but that's what the best coaches do. And, and I think that's what the best quarterbacks do. And if you can get a player like Justin to play fast and free, then, you know, I think that you're going to see the production and the results that you're looking for. And so I think that that's what we're stressing is to play fast, um, to be aggressive. Um, Justin's one of the best decision makers in the NFL. Um, so that's that's not going to change. But um, really excited to put in the work together. And, and that's what, you know, this training camp is going to be out for, for us offensively is Kellen, you know, figuring out who we are. And there's going to be a lot of time between now and our first game. And we just got to put in the right work until our first game. Fast and aggressive, Brandon. Does that mean that there's going to be some more stretching of the field with Justin and especially with his arm? Certainly going to try. You know, I mean, you want to stretch it both ways, vertically and horizontally. But, I mean, anytime you have a player like Justin who can access any part of the field with the type of accuracy, that's what you want to do. And when, you know, we've, you know, I think our organization has done such a good job of bringing in the weapons so that he can play to that fullest potential of his, which, you know, you know, you've got Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, Josh Palmer, Quentin Johnston, Gerald Everett, Donald Parham, Austin Eckler. Like, you've got the weapons to go, you know, play the way you want to play. So we'll figure it out in training camp. Um, and, you know, Justin's going to be putting in all the hard work to get it there. On the other side of the ball, we're talking about stress and defense. A guy who stresses out a lot of offenses is Derwin James. And he's healthy. You've used him, we all know, in a number of different ways. Is he still going to sort of be that guy who's all over the place? Or did you find that, hey, you know, when he's at that safety position or more traditional position, that other guys fill in their roles even better? I think that the, what makes him so unique is his ability to play those different roles at such a high level. I think he's that chess piece. You know, I think offensively, like a lot of people are seeing from a, a Debo Samuel or, a, you know, Kyle Juszczyk or a George Kittle, you know, the way uh, Kyle uses uh, Christian McCaffrey. You know, that's the type of player Derwin is, is. He can play star. He can play money. He can play safety. Um, he can play outside linebacker. He can be in those places. And, you know, what that does is it gets us in the right matchup. It puts the stress from an identification standpoint, you know, on the offense. And then what I think it does is it opens up things for other guys. By putting him other places, it makes it easier for Khalil and Joey. It makes it easier for our interior D-line, Eric Kendricks, Kenneth Murray. Um, and so we're going to make sure that we use him, you know, to the fullest um, because he's a weapon. He's a playmaker. He's a difference maker. And he's the heart of our team. 
Obviously, the season didn't end the way that you guys wanted to against Jacksonville. How have you this offseason? Is it buried? Is it gone? Are we not talking about it? Last season was last season. Is it fuel for 2023? How are you uh, trying to do it for yourself, but also for this team? I think fuel for 2023. I think we faced it. You know, I think anytime you go through a tough game like that, which you got to do is you got to go face it. And um, this isn't the first time in pro sports where a team has lost a tough game. And that's what I told our team. And what we need to do is, you know, understand why we lost that game. And um, I know when I left the field that day, I was more confident than ever in this group. And anytime. Really, why is that? Just we have the right players, both from an ability standpoint and a leadership standpoint to get to where we want to go. And what we had to do is we had to go through something for the first time, um, but to bring this group back to add the pieces that we've added in the draft and, you know, free agency, you know, this team's ready to go have a special season and we're ready for the work. And, you know, I think, you know, you draw on examples. I went and spent some time with Steve Kerr in Golden State and, you know, Greg Popovich. And, you know, you take a look at all these other sports and, um, you know, I think in some of the examples that, you know, I tried to go seek, you know, some wisdom from is, hey, the response was, really really big because they had the right group of guys and that's where our focus is going to be and you know this group is made up of the right stuff and we just got to put in the right work in training camp brandon when you and i last spoke at the combine we talked about how you know that this team on a talent level stacks up to kansas city to the defending world champs but you said the difference was the experience do you guys are, are you do you have that experience has, has the gap lessened i guess between yourselves and a defending world champion yeah i mean we've got so much respect for them we've had four incredible games with those guys and um you know it's just every time we play it's one of the premium games in the nfl but you know i think you know with andy being there since 2013 they're just you know that thing's been going for a while you can tell you know and they have the experience you know their their premium players have been in a ton of big games together and and you know when you're at the beginning of something you got to go through those experiences you got to get into the playoffs you got to be in the big games together to know how to play those games and so I thought last year was a good step for us and you know the way it ended you know none of us um you know expect to lose a game like that you know and but we have to face that we did and but this group's ready to respond and um you know like i said we're just excited about training camp putting the right work i'll wrap with this brandon what's going to be the difference between the 2022 chargers and the 2023 chargers you're going to see you know where you, you know you guys will see a lot better than you hear so um we're not interested in in making any predictions right now we're just interested in in you know doing all the hard work and i think all of you guys will see it you know eventually Brandon Staley, Chargers head coach. Thanks so much. Thanks. So every team in the AFC West has made a habit of looking up at the Chiefs as the defending Super Bowl champs have ruled the division the past seven seasons. They again have the top odds to win the West at a minus 180. Chargers seeking their first division title since 2009 stand at a plus 340 with Herbert leading that L.A. offense. They'll look to turn the page on last year's tough finish to the season as Jonathan Jones explains. So Justin Herbert just became the highest paid player in NFL history. You know what changed? Absolutely nothing. I mean, that's part of the reason why the L.A. Chargers felt so comfortable about making their franchise quarterback the highest paid player in the league's history because of his moxie, because of the man that he is. And so in talking with some of his teammates, they were saying that he was almost embarrassed by the amount of attention that he's gotten from his deal, $262.5 million extension over five years. So you know that he's going to be the guy moving forward. And they get a new offensive coordinator and Kellen Moore to come in. And one of the things with this pairing that the Chargers are hoping is that Justin Herbert is going to be able to stress defenses by stretching those defenses. And that doesn't just mean vertically. That also means horizontally and getting guys out into space. But please, my goodness, get them out vertically as well. We're talking about Herbert, one of the best arms in the NFL who averaged just 6.3 air yards per attempt last season. That's not good enough for Herbert when he has guys like Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, where they just drafted Quentin Johnston in the first round. And oh, by the way, they have a healthy and cohesive offensive line for the first time in LA Chargers history. You have to go back to San Diego the last time they had an offensive line this good and this healthy right now. And in talking with Brandon Staley, the one thing that they cannot avoid, that they cannot get around is their playoff failure from last year. Remember, of course, in the AFC wildcard game against the Jacksonville Jaguars, up 27 to zero, and then ultimately blowing the third largest lead in NFL history, losing to the Jaguars in dramatic fashion. Well, 
they're not forgetting that. They're not just burying that. That's going to have to fuel the 2023 Chargers. And even in this offseason, Brandon Staley told us he met with Steve Kerr. He met with Greg Popovich, the NBA coaching greats, about handling adversity and getting over that hump. Remember the 2013 NBA Finals when the Spurs under Popovich lost 4-3 to three to the Heat. Remember in 2016 when Steve Kerr's Warriors gave up a 3-1 lead to LeBron James's Cavaliers. How do you bounce back from that? That's the journey that Brandon Staley has been on. That's the next step that these Chargers have to take. And let me tell you, they have the talent to do it. HQ touring camps around the NFL. We go from one L.A. team to another as the Rams are up next, where you will hear from Coach Sean McVay and quarterback Matthew Stafford. That's followed by two more from the NFC and the Cowboys and 49ers. Then by month's end, a pair from the AFC and the Jaguars and the Bills. 